Oh, that's pretty, huh? Ask any of oh, the pilots who ferry hunters, yeah. campers, and beachcombers to the coastline outside Cordova, Alaska. This is really a cool place. Something yeah. interesting is always washing up. This is all something new. Kayak Island Where is the, the final hunters? resting place for a lot of yeah. trash cast overboard out in the Pacific. See the debris down there? Yep. But they've never seen it quite like this. Oh, yeah. Look at this ahead of us. Holy smoke. People started noticing all the stuff just a few weeks ago. We should take a hike and see what we can find. Winter retreated, revealing a field of debris that stretches for miles. What's this, toilet bowl cleaner or something? Chris Pallister is president of the nonprofit Gulf of Alaska Keeper, which collects junk on beaches each spring and summer. It was just absolutely stunning the first time I saw it. I just couldn't hardly comprehend what we were seeing compared to what we've seen in the past. It's difficult to tell where the objects came from. It's out of someone's bathroom shaving cream or something. Or even what they are. Potassium hydroxide. <laughs> I don't have a clue. Much of the debris has Japanese writing on it. The items are generally clean, not buried in the sand, and look like they showed up sometime in the last few months, leading a lot of people who know these beaches well to believe the wreckage could only have come from one place. Last year's earthquake and tsunami in Japan swept entire communities out to sea. NOAA's Marine Debris Monitoring Program says it's quite possible some of the items arrived in Alaska this past winter. We've seen pictures of these yards full of these floats onshore in Japan, and those yards are empty of these floats now. The situation is even worse on Montague Island, where officials from NOAA, the U.S. Coast Guard, and the Alaska Department of Environmental Conservation flew over the weekend. This is all Asian. They cannot yet confirm a link between the debris and the tsunami, but they say the quantity is certainly a clue. And we knew there would be questions about radioactivity, so we brought along this personal radiation monitor. You just wear it on your belt. Right now it's picking up two micrograms. That's a very low background level of radiation. We picked up the same amount back in Anchorage. So using this device on this debris, from what we can tell, it's safe. You can smell old fuel in there. Fuel and chemical containers and other substances will require extra care and caution during cleanup. It's a refrigerator, household refrigerator. They're interesting. I don't know what I'm going to do with them all. For beachcombers like Mike Collins, a Cordova pilot, it all makes for a very uncertain situation. Yes, there are some treasures out there. Here's uh, some of those big plastic floats that we're finding. Um, these things are scattered all up and down the whole coastline. But some of what he comes across is simply haunting. There was a lot of shoes that it makes you wonder where, where they came from. I think it's probably building insulation for like foaming inside of a metal building. And this may not be the worst of it. The latest NOAA model shows a mass of tsunami debris sitting north of Hawaii. The staggering mess. For at least the next year, Alaska could continue to share the pain of Japan's loss. God, what a sad situation. For the Morning Edition, Ted Land, Channel 2 News.